What we have is we want more of everything. Every time when you turn on the television, it always says, you know what, your car is not the latest thing, so it's boring. So you need to get a new thing. You need to get this product in order for you to have happiness. We get surrounded by so many things. You know what, you need alcohol, you need this, you need that, you need this, you need that. Uh, this was left, this was this was new. What you had before, it was nothing compared to what you can have now. We're never satisfied, and we're always uh, showed off in society. Everywhere I see, it's always, uh, I think I saw like one uh, commercial of the Muppets. It's where they were promoting a uh, car and he just busts through the door. He's like, boring, your life is boring. But if you get this car, your life will be exciting. Uh, there's a lot of things that go like that. And basically we have this myth that if we got something, if we got something or someone, then that will make us happy. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys a story. How many of you guys like stories? It's the story of Navis. This man had a vineyard. A vineyard is where you grow like uh, fruit. It's kind of like a vegetable garden, but they mainly use it for wine, for grapes and stuff. And so one day, Navis was on his garden, and then a king who was right there of the government, he says, Wow, Navis, that's a great vineyard you got there. You know what? I, I want it because it's right close to my house. You know what? I have many vineyards on my own, but you know what? I'm, I, I want this one. This was a king, this is a person who had a lot. And you would wonder, if you had everything, then you'd be happy. Man, if I only had this big house, or if I only had, uh, if only I was a millionaire. Just, just a millionaire, I don't even want to be a billionaire. As long as I have a million dollars, I'll be happy. Well, uh, this king, he had more than what someone could want. And he asked Navis, Navis, I gotta have your vineyard. I'll give you whatever you want, we'll give you a trade, or I'll pay you in cash for what it's worth. And so Navis, he said, you know what, king? I just can't do it. God gave it to me, and God said for me not to sell my uh, sell my inheritance to people of, uh, who worship other gods. And the king, you know what he did? He heard that, and he went home, and he got, he lay down on, the, on his bed, pouted, and wouldn't eat. He he basically did like a tantrum. He just closed his arms and go, ah, I couldn't get it. And, and uh, as I'm pretty sure you guys don't do tantrums. But uh, this king, he, if he didn't get what he want, he, he would whine. And so he goes like this, like, ah, oh, probably in his bed. He's like, ah, he's probably making noises, like, why can't I have that in here? And so his wife, he hears it, and she just hears, ah, she's like, what's the, what's the matter with you? And so, and so basically, he says, ah, oh, nothing. But you know when something's wrong? Uh, so she asks, tell me, what's wrong? I, I spoke to Navis. I said, give me your yard. Give me your vineyard. And uh, he said he wouldn't give it to me. Now I don't have a vineyard. Uh, I, don't, I have vineyards, but I don't have that one. And his wife says, don't worry. You're the king, aren't you? I'm like, yes, I am. We'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. And so what she did is uh, she got a letter. She made a feast. And she got a letter saying to the people at the feast that Navis... Uh, was blaspheming God and blaspheming the government. Basically put him in like a terrorist. And then before you know it, they got poor Navis and they got him and they stole him and he died. So finally she goes back, King, uh, yes dear, you can have your uh, vineyards. And Navis is dead, he's no longer there. And you know what? He's like, how'd that happen? But he probably didn't question. It's kind of like the cartel. If you don't give them what they want, they have ways to getting what they want. This is it's a tough scenario, and uh, Navis he died, and so you think he'd be happy. He got his vineyard. He's like, this is where I'm gonna put my vegetable garden. This is where I'm gonna put my carrots. Aquí va a estar mis cacahuates. Aquí va a estar mi sandía. Or uh, he's using it for his own. And then a prophet of God came to him, saying, King, I have something against you. You know what? You did something wrong. You took an innocent man's product, and for that, you shall be punished. You shall be punished, and a God will smite you with a curse. Now let me tell you how this king reacted. With this king, let's see if I can find it real quick. It says, when Ahab, the king, heard these words, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and fasted. And he laid on the floor and he wept bitterly. You know what? When you compare it to before and after... Before, he was all like, man, I didn't get my vineyard. Now, he's tearing his clothes, he's crying because of the, the torment that God's going to put on him. 
you know what? That's how it is with life. They may say, you know what? You're better if you have this. You know what? You, you maybe enjoy your wife or your girlfriend right now, but like if someone else passed by and she's even more beautiful, you kind of you compare. You're like, oh man, I don't want this person no more. And you think, man, I I, I want to go with that person. And we always think we're we're satisfied. Well, uh, you know what? Truly, in us, we we are never fully satisfied in this world. You, uh, I think it was the Rockefeller family. Do you guys know who the Rockefeller family is? These are the people who are the most richest people on earth. Like, they got money to spend for generations of generations. Like, they can't even spend all their money. And these people, they ask them, how much money does it take for it to be, to be happy? And you know what they said? One dollar more. Just a little bit more. They already have so much. But what would you do with that much money? You would probably give it out. I don't know what you would do. But for them, they were never satisfied. In this world, we never get satisfied. And, and basically, that's how our heart is. We get jealous of many things. We get jealous of the people who have a higher positions than us. Maybe at work, or maybe at other things. Or we get, uh, we start to compare the people that we're with. You know, there's some things that you're not allowed to covet. The Bible says that you may, you shall not covet your neighbor's uh, fox, nor his properties, nor his wife, nor anything. You know what? Uh, God tells us that we're not allowed to have the right to covet what someone already else has. With this story of the of Naboth, he already had a treasure. The king could have got another vineyard uh, probably uh, a little bit farther, but that, that would have been all right. It would have been his. But he took something that wasn't his. For him, he says, you know what? I don't care what, what you have. I'm going to take it. It's our greedy heart. And basically, that's how our hearts are sometimes. We may have that myth of wanting more, the myth of greed, the myth of all these things. But you know what? Truly, we're never satisfied in our hearts and our world. We're never satisfied. The only thing that satisfies us is God. I remember when I first came to Christ, nothing, nothing like, I was a whatever kid. I was like, whoa, let's do something, whatever. Like, nothing really uh, caught my attention. Until I gave my life to God, that's when He gave me the whole 180 degrees. And basically, this is my challenge for you guys today. You know what, you may think of yourself like, oh man, I, I didn't I don't have this, I don't have that. There was a there was a YouTube video that I saw. It was about these two kids and one kid he's just sitting down and the uh, the little kid doesn't even have shoes, he has shoes that are ripped and he and he's wearing them and he's he la vergüenza que la he's so embarrassed of these shoes and he sits right next to the other kid and he looks at him, he's all nice dressed, like my brother over here, all nice dressed and with pants and shirts and had everything all, all clean, spiffy. And he, he had shoes that were all torn. He's like, man, why do I have these shoes? And then he goes, he goes under a tree, and he cries, and he says, you know what? Ah, oh, man, I wish I had his life. I wish I had his life. I wish I had his life. And you know what? In this video, he got what he wanted. So magically, they switch. This is a fairy tale. They switch, and then uh, before you know it, the kid, he's sitting down. He's, oh, man, I got my wish. And then the other kid who, who uh, was at the tree, he was all jumping. He's like, yeah, yeah, woo. And then the, the, the kid who was sitting down, he's like, well, wait, why can't I get up? And so his mother comes, he's like, sorry son, sorry that I'm late. She brings a wheelchair. The guy's paralyzed. And at that moment, he knew he made a big mistake. Sometimes we get so jealous what what other people have, we don't appreciate what we have. And this kid who uh, did, couldn't walk, he was all jumping, he was, he was excited, torn clothes, whatever. As long as he had his legs, he was happy. So you may think, man, ah, man, my life is so worse. But there are other people who have it worse than us. And that's basically the message for, for today. That you have an open mind. That you appreciate. Be content with what you have. Don't be jealous of what other people have. What you have, hey, man, that's a privilege. Uh, just, just like right now, being in the United States, billions of people praying that they make it over here. Just to be where you are today. And that, that's just a blessing right there, guys. So let's, let's just bow our heads and let's just make a quick prayer.